everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Keely Allen and welcome to this week's video. This video I wanted to do something slightly different to what I normally do and I wanted to talk a little bit more about some common and uncommon variegated houseplants because I feel like that's something really really useful for people that want variegation on a budget essentially. Now I don't know what I'm going to call this video but that is essentially what it is about. I want to show you some cool ideas for plants if you're on a bit of a budget and honestly I have a list here with me now and nearly all of them are actually common so you should be able to pick these up nearly anywhere obviously again as I say all the time some countries might not have certain plants available but the, the vast majority of plants on this list are acquirable for nearly anybody these are like mass-produced plants so I wanted to present to you 10 picks of variegated plants that I think are pretty cool and I think would be nice to have if you want variegation but you have a tight budget. So without further ado, let's go. I have my phone to Google pictures of the plants so I can formulate my opinion as we go, but here we go. Plant number one is the Ficus elastica teniki, teniki, teniki. So this plant, I used to have one of these actually. I had one for, I don't know, maybe three, four months. It was at that time when I was, you know, getting into the rare plants. So I had to get rid of the common ones to house the rare ones because I didn't have much space and stuff like that. So I did have this plant for a while. It was definitely a favorite of mine, but this is essentially, I mean, I'm going to call it a variegated rubber plant because that's basically what it is. It's variegated from the outside, but you can sometimes get patches that work from the margin of the leaf inwards. So, I mean, you can see it here on my lovely green screen. Um, that's the kind of plant it is. It's really, really nice. And I'm pretty sure, I can't remember totally, but I can see a plant here on Google Images where the new leaf is coming in and the margins and any part of the leaf that is cream, it starts out a little bit pink. Can't confirm that happens on every one of them because it's been so long since I saw this plant, but it's a really, really nice plant. It's very good if you want a plant that's a bit more structural and sturdy. They're quite good for that. Now, ease of care, I remember them being all right. They need higher light than your average plant in my experience. I would definitely say you need to keep them closer to a window or a brighter light. Otherwise they can just grow a bit nasty, a bit leggy, a bit gross. Because by default the space between the nodes on the plant is quite long. It's got very long internodal spacing. So you are going to want to keep that in the best light that you can. Again from my experience, very limited, do not get me wrong. But it is a very nice plant and in terms of variegation it offers a really nice clean fresh creamy white variegation and I think it's very very beautiful and for that reason I think it's a really nice one especially if you you know you maybe want quite a large plant you can get jumbo plants of these where it's got like several in a pot and the plants like 50 60 70 centimeters high you can kind of go big or go go small with this it doesn't really matter so if you're considering something variegated but totally on a budget or you just want something variegated in that spot in the corner or wherever it is then this one is quite a nice one especially if you like more sturdy structural plants and you don't like more I don't want to say flimsy, but you know what I mean. The next plant on my list is actually two. I know I'm kind of cheating. I said 10, but there's like technically more than 10. The next two plants on my list that I think have really good variegation for something very affordable are the Marble Queen Pothos and the Enjoy Pothos. Now, these look very, very different, but I think, and again, I'm looking at my phone, they offer something, I mean, they offer something very different to each other in terms of variegation, but they offer nice variegation. I do actually like this. Now, I have both of these plants. Actually, I forgot that I had an Enjoy. I might never have hauled it, but I think I've mentioned it before. I do have a Marble Queen and I do have an Enjoy. One grows way faster than the other, but one is more variegated than the other. So I don't know if you can guess which one grows faster, but the Marble Queen, as shown here, does grow faster than the Enjoy. And I can only assume that's because the Enjoy has a lot more variegation in it inherently. A lot of people get a bit confused by that. And basically the best way to think about it with any variegated plant, it doesn't matter if it's rare, common, it just doesn't matter if it's genetic mutation, it doesn't matter. The best way to remember how variegation works is remember that the amount of green on your plant is the same as an engine in a car. The more green you have, the bigger the engine to grow, to do all the rest, to photosynthesize size the more white that you introduce the less the engine size is so certain plants if they get too variegated they can't survive because the engine's too small for this big plant right there isn't enough green on the plant and that's why when you do buy variegated plants you have to be really careful i mean all of these plants on this list by the way are totally safe to buy you're not gonna lose your plant or anything like that but it's important to remember that and i think 
that's quite a good explanation of how variegation works. If people are a bit confused as to why certain things grow really slow, like someone buys a variegated Monstera and it grows really slow and they don't know why, think of it that way. Think of chlorophyll and the, the green on the plant. Think of it as like your engine and how much oomph you've got or horsepower or whatever you want to think of it as. So yeah, Marble Queen is different. It comes off a little bit minty sometimes and I don't love mint stuff. It's no secret, I don't love it for a lot of reasons, but it can be quite nice. Now, I think the more light, the better. I can't remember how mine's looking at the minute. I think it's gone quite greeny, but I have kind of let it grow out a bit. You might have to prune it a little bit to keep it a bit more vibrant, but this thing propagates just as well as any other pothos, so great. Enjoy, I've had less experience with. I can just tell you it grows slowly. That's one thing I can tell you. The variegation though, as you can see, is, is much more solid. So really it's a case of either or, unless you like them both. If you want something that grows like wildfire though, I'd totally go for the Marble Queen. I think it's just an easier plant. It's very, very similar to the Aurea, the Epipremnum Aura. So the Devil's, well, it's all Devil's Ivy, isn't it? It's very, very similar to the Golden Pothos. Just this one is white slash minty. So if you don't like the Golden Pothos and you think, ugh, yellow variegation, that one is almost a direct comparison. It's just got better variegation. So that might be something you might want to try and pick up at a garden center. Right, we're going to jump out of common and into uncommon. Now I'm putting this in uncommon and I planned this video a little while ago, but I think the value of these have actually shot up since I put it in this video, but I'm going to keep it in here because I feel like it will come back down again. I don't think that it's going to stay up forever. So this one is a little bit less obtainable, but this is the Burley Marks Variegated, Burley Marks Variegata. And I've got to put it on here because although it is more money and it has shot up, apologies, it is so easy to care for and it is so easy to propagate and just generally to learn from. If you want to start getting into rarer stuff and you have no idea where to start on a plant and you think, oh God, I don't want to lose my money. I don't want it to rot. I don't want to kill it. These plants are great because of the way they grow. If anyone owns one, they'll know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like it's, it's uncontrollable, really. Um, when you look at all the, the stems, the petioles, all the different nodes, like it's crazy. For a variegated plant that isn't super common, and again, it was when I planned this, it had gone right down in value. Uh, you could get these for mid double digits maximum. I know that's still high budget for a lot of you. I understand that, but it was one of the lowest end rare plants you could get. Rare. You know what I mean? So I'm putting it on this list. I'm acknowledging the price has gone up, but if you can afford something a little bit more, honestly, I'm, I'm telling you straight, start with this one because it's not going to let you down. You'll learn everything you need to know really about rare plants, a lot of it anyway, from having this one. So it is a pretty plant as well. Very easy to propagate and give to your friends. You can probably get one leaf cuttings of this very easily. So you don't actually have to buy a whole plant. When I said mid double digits, I was talking for a whole plant. I wasn't talking for a one leaf cutting. So you might be able to get a one leaf cutting pretty easily. So that's a really, really nice one. I won't linger on it because again, it's a little bit high value. Now this plant, this next plant is also high value, but it's definitely coming down. And I mean, it's coming down. Um, I'm assuming it's being TC and everything else. So the prices on this plant are only going to drop. So if you do want this one, you can wait longer and it's going to come out in garden centers, no problem. I think it might have already in some countries, in some places, but this is the Syngonium album. So the white variegated Syngonium. And oh my God, you need, you need to try Syngonium Albo out. I'm serious. It will teach you, again, it will teach you about variegation. It will teach you how to preserve it, you know, when to cut your plant, if it's too variegated or if it's reverting and it's gone all green, you're going to lose it. It will teach you all of that. It will be really forgiving on overwatering, on underwatering, all of that good stuff. To top it off, the variegation is lily white. And I know a lot of people, when they look for variegation, they want like white, white variegation. Like they won't settle for like the creamy kind of Ficus Elastica, Thai Constellation kind of white. They want bang white. And Syngonium Albo does give you that. So it's a little bit, again, higher priced, but I'm telling you, I'm pretty sure you can find it in garden centers. It's spreading like wildfire. So if you look at this plant, you think it's out of my price range, then honestly, just wait a bit and it will fall within your price range in the next six months probably. I don't think it's got long left really before it just becomes everything that you see in a garden center. So that's kind of exciting for variegated plants to see that becoming more accessible. Next thing is the Hoyer Crimson Queen. Let me just Google it to make sure I've got the right plant that I'm talking about. So we have the Hoyer Crimson Queen, but I think there is also another Hoyer that I own, and I can't remember the name of it now, but it's the Hoyer Carnosa. It's known as Hoyer Carnosa Tricolor. That's certainly what I bought it as, and that is everywhere as well. So both of these plants are available everywhere. I'll put them both up now. 
so you can see the differences because I, I really should have mentioned them both. I'm less familiar with the Crimson Queen, but I think I picked it because it was more focused on a variegated look than the tricolor because the tricolor adds more pink in. So that's probably why I've gone for this one. Again, I planned this video a while ago before everything kind of had a downturn, but I'm pretty sure that's why I picked the Crimson Queen. And honestly, it does kind of exhibit the hallmarks of what you want in variegation. And I do think it fits the bill. Again, there is some pink on this when it emerges because Hoyas get sunstressed and a lot of them do turn darker or pinker or whatever. So you do get that, which is nice. But depending on how much pink you like, there are these two options here. So either plant really, you can honestly bracket them the same. But I think this is really nice. And if you actually look at a lot of pictures of Crimson Queens specifically online, you get a lot of leaves that are like super, super white. And I think that's a really nice way of adding variegation to your home, to your plant corner, to your plant shelf, to anything you want, to your office, because Hoyas are really good to take care of, by the way. It's a really good way of doing it without spending a ton of money. And that's what this video is about, right? So I picked that one because I, I think it'll give you the variegated vibes. Again, it's probably down to the specimen you pick as well. Um, I'm looking at a really nice one here. That's quite nice. There is a lot of green, don't get me wrong. And a lot of the white is on the margin, but you do get some really good sectoral chunks and some, some leaves that are even all white. So that is a nice one as well. The tricolor is a little bit different. It's less variegated. It's not giving you quite the same sectoral, like pow, white variegation vibes as the other one. So really, it kind of depends on your preference. It depends what you prefer. I own the tricolor. I don't own a Crimson Queen, but I kind of would. If I saw one in a store, I would pick it up. I just haven't seen many plants lately. I don't think I've been shopping in quite a while. I've had a lot to do. But there was a point in time where I was going into plant stores all the time and I was actually looking for a lot of hoyer and I never found them. The tricolor is different. It gives you a completely different vibe and it's actually green on the margin on a tricolor. So it's kind of inverted. But again, up to you. They're both pretty good. Now, next up is the Philodendron Brazil. And I'm pretty sure that you can get this plant nearly anywhere for a very affordable price. This is quite a good one. Now, I personally prefer the all green version to the Brazil, but that's just me. Sometimes I just, I don't want the fuss and I want the plant to be all green. But if you want variegation and you don't mind yellow variegation or cream variegation, then this one is quite a nice one and you don't really have to do anything. It's just going to grow. Now it is a little bit chaotic, so don't assume, you know, if you grow it out green, it's going to stay green. It can literally come back, but I don't think you'll have a problem anyway because you can pick them up anywhere you like. If you have any problems, it's so easily replaceable and it, it can look really cute. You can get variegation variegation ranging from a tiny little line down the middle because that's where the variegation appears or you can get most of the leaf that's variegated so you can get quite a nice effect over your entire plant. I did used to have one of these but I actually got rid of it. Um, it was down to keeping the all green or the Brazil and I actually kept the all green. I just preferred it but it's a really nice plant and it is so affordable honestly. You shouldn't struggle getting hold of this. In fact I would be amazed if you did struggle. I'd want to hear about it if you struggled because I don't think I've ever not seen this in a plant shop. The next plant on my list is gorgeous. Don't get me wrong, it is, it's stunning, it's beautiful, but it, it's not the easiest plant in the world. And I have to tell you that, I'm not gonna sit here and say that it's really easy and it's not. It's also not quite as accessible as a lot of the other plants on this list. Not necessarily because it's super expensive. Now, I don't know what the market for it is now, but I remember when I last kind of talked about it, the prices have kind of gone up a bit and I don't think it went up a bit because it was super desirable. So I actually think the prices went up because there was a lot of loss on the plant. Because this plant here, this Calathea White Fusion, has been in deep seed production for a long time. But I'm pretty sure that once these things come out of a greenhouse, they tend to go pretty shit. Whenever I have seen them in a shop, they, they don't look so good at all. They don't look so hot because they just crisp up, especially when it's in a big box store. And as we all know, plants in big box stores get quite a bit of abuse and Calathea generally never seem to hold up to it. They're always in the reduced section, aren't they? If you ever want a Calathea, by the way, pro tip, go to your big box store and look in the reduced section. If you're willing to bring one back to life, as long as it's not dead, then you probably find what you're looking for in there because nine times out of 10, they can't hack it. I don't know what the price actually is on this at the minute, but it's not going to be something insane or anything like that. In a lot of places, you can get it really cheap. I think in the Netherlands, you can get it super cheap as well. It really just, it kind of really does depend on where you're living. Um, I'm not sure what the prices are in the US, if you know, write it down below. But it's a lovely plant and the variegation is gorgeous. I do have one of these, but they're not the easiest plants to grow. They need a lot of humidity and a lot of love. And if you've got the environment, like high humidity, and I mean like 60% upwards, you're probably okay. Just don't miss a watering otherwise. It's not going to be good. But they're lovely plants and I had to mention them because they are accessible, but I wouldn't get it if you're not familiar with A. Calathea or B. 
just a plan that isn't that tough because I think you will lose your money on it and I think you might kill it. Not through any fault of your own. They Honestly, these plants are horrendous. I think I killed one actually. I think I bought three. Did I buy three in? I gave one to my mum and I've kept the other one. And the one I have is actually beautiful, um, but it's also growing in like 90% humidity. So of course it is. Um, so just be careful if you want that. It is gorgeous. It's very sexy. It's very hot. Loving it. But it's not the easiest in the world. If you know different, if you think it is easy, then please write down below because I'm, I'm kind of keen to see the opinions. I think I've asked this before, but a lot of people have differing opinions and a lot of people actually say this plan is easy. So I'll let you make your own opinion up, but be careful if you want to buy it if you've never dealt with Calabria before. Right, this next plant, I oh, I used to want one of these, you know, and I've never really seen one. And I think when I have seen one in real life, they just haven't really held up to the images on Google, right? The next plant I want to talk about is the Trade Scantia Tricolor. And I, I know it's got a proper name, right? But the name you're going to find it under is probably Trade Scantia Tricolor. So we'll just stick with that because that's what happens when you get into the more accessible house plants. They, they think that people don't care about the plant name, so they'll just give it a name. So that's what we're talking about today. This plant, if you like pink, this plant is the one for you. Now, normally I recommend a different plant. I don't think I have on this list. No, I don't. Normally I would recommend a different plant for pink-ish variegation. And you might know what it is. It's a type of stromanthi. But I'm not going to talk about it today because I've talked about it enough. And this plant is a lot easier. But if you like pink, this is the plant for you. Especially if you like hanging plants as well. Um, I'm sure you can make this climb, but generally speaking, you would probably grow this hanging. And it's such a beautiful plant. The variegation I'm looking at here, it comes in kind of pinstripey a lot of the time. You get chunks of variegation, but you also get this beautiful striping through the leaves. And I might actually have to get one because I'm kind of here for it. Now, it's not the only trade scantia that is actually very beautiful. There are a ton, by the way. If you like this plant and you've never heard of this type of plant before, I really suggest you Google the different types because there's a lot of them that I actually like. But this one is just one that I've always been kind of after for some time. I'm looking for one here in, in Australia and it's $20 for a pot. So I don't, it's not expensive. Do you know what I mean? It's really not. It's pretty accessible. Again, I haven't seen it everywhere. And when I have seen it, it hasn't been super pink. I don't know the conditions for it to go pink or anything like that. But if you want something variegated, that's very, very beautiful and, and honestly quite impressive. I would go for this one. And I am probably on the hunt for one of these, to be honest. I think I always have been. I just haven't seen one that's, you know, got, got some kahunas to it. But that's definitely a plan I want to point out for the, you know, the pink contribution to this video because we've done a lot of white and a bit of yellow so that's my pink contribution to this video i really like that and i think if you google it you'll see a lot of nice pictures so that's a really nice option and i have liked this plant since i've liked house plants <laughs> i really have so i might try and pick that up i need to start going into garden centers and big box stores and stuff like that a little bit more to be honest because that's that's quite pretty right the next one i've thrown in for a silver category i guess you could say and there are a few variations of this plant so you will see a couple of different ones on the internet and honestly a lot of the time they're labeled as the exact same thing but i'm going to talk about the silver satin pothos um, it's got loads of different names i'm going to cover it as that name because that's the name i think if you search for it you will get Kind of where you need to be anyway. There are different variations of these plants. Some of them have bigger leaves than others. Some of them have different shaped leaves than others. Some of them have more silver. Some of them have less silver. Some of them have different um, placement, I would say, to others. Now I've had, what have I had? I've had the Silvery Anne, which is my favorite, which is this one. And I've had the Exotica, which has got big leaves. I've had both. And I think, in my opinion, they are the nicest. Really, really nice plants really, really meaty leaves, and of course they're silver. So if you want variegation and you're not keen on white, you just think, oh, but you know, a bit trendy, and you don't like pink, because I mean, personally, I actually don't like pink. Um, it's rare that a pink plant kind of captures my attention. Um, but if you don't want either of those things, but you want variegation, then try silver. And honestly, when I think of silver, this is the first plant that I think of, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And if you get the right lighting on it, it's beautiful. It really is like a silver, not glittery, but it's just got the most amazing sheen on this plant. It's a really, really good one. Again, 
different variations of it. So don't be put off by what I've shown you. Look for the different variations and see what your local garden center or online or whatever has to offer. And last on this list, I'm going to show you a plant that I actually do not like at all. I've made no secret of it, guys. I'm not going to pretend I like something that I don't, but I don't like it. But that's not the point of this video, is it? The point of this video is to find you plants that show variegation for a decent amount of money. So they're very affordable and they're very accessible. It's up to you to decide if you like them or not. Not me. So the last plant on my list is the Philodendron Birkin. Now, these look like they can revert a little bit. They either revert or the pattern fades over time. I can't remember which. Again, correct me in the comments if you know. I feel like it fades over time. But basically, new leaves come out with like a really fine pinstripe of white or cream on these leaves when it grows. You can actually get sectoral chunks of uh, variegation on these plants. I'm looking and I can't bloody see one now. <laughs> They're all just pinstriped. You can get sectoral variegation, but honestly, every picture I'm looking at on Google now, I'm just scrolling down Google. I can't see any with sectoral variegation, but I wanted to present this to you as a different way of having variegation, a cheap way of having variegation, and just something a bit different. Um, this plant isn't for me personally. And it's just, there's, there's no weird reason. It's mainly down to the stripes. I don't really like how it presents. I think, I think if I'm going to have variegation, I'd rather have it in a, a solid, distinctive manner. They are good plants. I'm pretty sure they're easy to care for. I mean, it's a, I've never owned one. It's a philodendron though, so I can't imagine it's too much trouble, especially when it's been mass produced. It's probably easy to care for. There are very few plants that have been mass produced that aren't easy to care for, and that's because they've been able to be mass produced. They've been able to be had in tissue culture, pulled out, acclimated, sold on, sat in stores to then reach the customer to then not have lossage on the plant. That's why plants become mass produced because they prove themselves time and time again and they, they, they're really really hardy so as long as producing a plant doesn't cost the producer loads of money in losses for any reason they become more and more produced until they eventually hit a value where there's no point so this plant's definitely had a decline from its original value i know a lot of people lost money on this plant but you could probably find it in a box store somewhere it might be a little bit more difficult to find but i'm pretty sure you will find it every time i've gone into my local store i've seen them so depending on what country you're in, it might be a little bit easier. It might be a little bit more difficult, but it is very accessible. And that concludes this week's video. There were 10 sort of houseplants that are variegated and on a budget. You may have seen all these plants before. If so, then that just proves the point that they are accessible. So that's good. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you'd like me to do any more on common houseplants, then please feel free to leave a comment. I am aware that you guys want to do another tier maker on common plants. That's probably going to be coming very soon. If you want to contribute to that video, i.e. give me suggestions on what plants to rate in my rating system, then just keep an eye on my Instagram and I will be putting up a little question box at some point. Anyway, Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like this video, please leave a like down below. It lets me know that I'm doing a good job making content and you're enjoying the content that I make. If you'd like to see any more of my content on this channel, then please feel free to hit that subscribe button. That's all for this week, guys. I will see you in the next one. Bye.